Anybody in here know what sin is? What is, what is sin? Yeah, somebody just toss it out. What is, what is sin? Disobey. Disobey who or what? God. God or Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the simple, basic definition of sin. When we sin, it's we're disobeying what God has told us to do. God says, live like this. And we say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to live like this. Any of you get to see any archery in the Olympics? Okay, maybe a few of you. How many of you in here have actually shot a bow or arrow? Okay, cool. Yeah, I used to work at a camp up in the mountains of North Carolina. And uh, one of the activities we had there was archery. And in fact, one summer, I got to work with a guy who was a professional archer. In fact, he also shot at the Olympic trials. This is how good he was. And man, when he would get up there with his fancy compound bow and pull back the, the, the string and let the arrow go, it was like it was like watching magic. I was like, dude, that is incredible. And he would just <laughs> hit the target all the time. And I'm like, holy cow. I wish I could do that. And I remember seeing him shoot his bow and arrow, and I was like, wow. I was just like in awe that I was a spectator at that point because I could not do that. Because, you see, this is how I shot a bow and arrow. I mean, I remember the first time I went to this camp and I got this recurved bow. And you guys pay attention because I'm going to ask you about this tomorrow. Yeah, I had a recurved bow. And that just, that's a bow that just has one string, okay? And so I got this recurved bow and I got my arrow. And the arrow has three feathers on it, okay? Two feathers are going the same direction and one feather goes the opposite direction. It's the odd feather. But what you have to do is you have to turn the odd feather out. And so what would happen is I would get my arrow, my bow and arrow up there, and I would pull back the string as hard as I could, and I was like, ee, ee, ee. and I mean I was pulling back as hard as I could, and I was like, ah. and I mean I could not pull that thing back. And they're like, pull it back. I'm like, I'm trying. I mean I was, I thought I was strong, but this bow was so strong, and so I pulled it back just a little bit, and I let. Go and the arrow just went like five feet in front of me, and everybody around me was laughing, and they were like, ah! and I was like, hey, I'll shoot you right now. And so I got another arrow and I pulled it back a little bit further this time, and my arrow just went Phew! and flew up in the tree, and everybody started laughing just like you. And so there I was, I was trying so hard and I was so embarrassed and I'm thinking, you know, how hard can this be? I mean, look, I've got to be able to do this. And so I did one time, the last time I pulled back with everything that I had and I let go of the arrow and sure enough, it started flying right towards the target and it hit the target. And I was so excited. I was like, I hit the target, I hit the target. And they were like, so? They were like, do you know how big that target is? I was like, yeah, it was pretty big. I mean, it was like a huge target. And they're like, but you're not just trying to hit the target. They're like, you see that little red circle right there in the middle? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, that's what you're supposed to hit. I was like, are you kidding me? And they're like, yeah, that's called the bullseye. You're supposed to hit the bullseye. My arrow, here was the bullseye. My arrow was way over here in this corner of the target. And they were like, see, you are way off. And I thought, man, I was so excited to just get it on the target. And they said, no, you're supposed to hit the bullseye. You're supposed to hit right in the middle. Did you know that the word sin is an archery term? And it means to miss the mark. It means to miss the bullseye. It, it means to miss the target altogether. And so when I was up there pulling back that, that bow and arrow as hard as I could and the arrow just flies down right there, I was sinning. When the arrow flew up into the tree, I was sinning. When I just barely hit the target, I was sinning. Every time I missed the middle mark, every time I missed the bullseye, I was sinning. And that's what it means for you and I to sin. It means that God has a perfect target, a perfect spot where he's saying, this is what I want you to aim for. This is what I want you to hit. This is perfection. And we get up and we do our very best. We, you know, try the best stuff on earth and we do everything that we can do to hit God's target. And you know what? Every time we fall short. 
We mess up. We sin. Even though we're trying with all of our might, we still miss the mark. But Jesus never missed the mark. Jesus came and lived a perfect and sinless life. Jesus came and he did everything that God wanted him to do. He did everything that the Father had told him to do. He obeyed God completely with his entire life. Even Jesus was tempted with the best stuff on earth. The devil even came to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you would just bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. I will give you everything. You'll have all the power right now. But listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, no. And Satan was like, come on, don't you want to be a winner? Don't you want everybody to worship you right now? Don't you want everybody to follow me? And Jesus said this, no. Jesus said, that's not why I'm here. Jesus said, I am here to be a loser in everybody else's mind. Jesus said, I am here to be a servant. I have come to seek and to save people. I have come to give my life, to die for them. I have come to give it all away. And the devil had to leave. He was like, wow, I cannot believe this. He did not cave in. He did not give in to the temptation. He did not sin. And Jesus lived 33 years. And at the end of his life, he was sentenced to die. Yesterday we were talking about he was sentenced to die on a cross, right? And on that cross, Jesus hung there. And he cried out these words. And listen, Jesus said, it is finished. What was finished? This is what was finished. Salvation for you and I. Jesus said, I have completed the task. And everybody else around Jesus was pointing to him, all those people who crucified him, and they were saying, we don't believe you. You are a loser. And Jesus said, no, I am a winner because I have done what God wanted me to do. You see, that's the measure of success in this life. It's doing what God wants you to do. It's giving yourself to Him. It's making Jesus number one in your life because Jesus honored God. And so when we honor God, we are winners. Everybody else around you may point at you and say, you're such a loser. Or why would you live that way? Or why don't you pursue money? Or why don't you pursue this or that? And you have to make a choice. And you have to decide whether Jesus is going to be number one or something else or someone else. Jesus made God his number one. And everybody else said, you're a loser. Jesus said this. He said, if they call me that, if they made fun of me, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If you follow me, understand, people are going to laugh at you. People are going to make fun of you. People are going to call you a loser. But Jesus said this, you will be a winner. If you want to find your life, Jesus says, you must lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake will find it. You see, sin has a way of transforming us into what we were not made to be. I'm going to do this song for you. It's called Monster. Some of you have been asking. And you, you kind of know what the song is about. Well, let me explain it for those who don't. You see, what happens is when Jesus is not number one. Okay, yeah, hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. When Jesus is not number one, something or someone else is. And that someone or something else can consume our lives and we can be transformed into something we were not created to be. You see, sin destroys. We can be so consumed with money or fame or popularity or things that it can consume us and it will destroy us. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Anyone who pursues after sin and sinful things, it will consume you and it will create a monster within you. But Jesus says this. I have come to give my life so that you would not have to be a monster, but that you could become the child of God that you were created to be. That you could be forgiven of your sin. 
And so even though we do this song that's cool, that talks about monster, I want you to understand the concept and the idea of being a monster is not cool. This whole idea that sin can destroy us is not what God wants for us. And the reason we do this song is because it does. It talks about the power of sin in our lives. But I have to tell you that there's a power that's greater than sin. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ overcame sin. Jesus Christ overcomes the monster in us. And he can overcome you today.